This is Taco Incidents, where we learn the secrets of breakthrough brand experience from the most brilliant leaders while we're on the search for the perfect taco. Join us on Taco Stop number 10, Empower Through Insecurities. I met up with Trent Ulysny at Seoul Mexican Cocina in Newport Beach, California. A serial entrepreneur, Trent has founded and is currently running businesses in everything from gelato to sake to retail sports nutrition, where his success has been founded on creating a brand experience that empowers others to conquer their insecurities. I wanted to learn why he believes in the power of brand experience, what he does to create it, and how it's helped him thrive. All over tacos. It really doesn't get much better than this. So Nutrition Zone, mm -hmm. Motivate, mm -hmm. got a lot, you got some other irons in the fire. <laughs> There's a irons. lot, like this is the life of a serial entrepreneur. Um, it's busy. It's busy. Yeah. And you have a family, yeah. an amazing family. Yep. Yeah. And um, you're living the dream in Newport Beach. Having a good time. Having a good time. Yep, so right now, um, I'm the president and, and co-owner of Nutrition Zone. We have 25 locations. We're the premier sports supplement store. Um, we're in five states and we actively sell franchises. Awesome. So on top of that, we have seven supplement brands that we own and operate. Four of which are exclusive to our Nutrition Zone stores and three of which are national. And on the national side, we have a strong direct-to-consumer, you know, kind of segment of the business. We have ambassadors that we manage and kind of oversee and, and, and we Influencers. Do that. Influencers, yeah. exactly. Influencers, yeah. We have the gym, which is kind of group training, which is called Team Motivate. Yeah. Um, we have 23 e-commerce sites that we oversee and manage to sell supplements and, and, <laughs> and nutritional products. Yeah. So I, I co-founded Taiku Sake. Taiku. Yep. Um, it's now the number one premium sake in, in the U.S. Um, it's done amazingly well, um, and that, there's a, you know, that whole story and, and experience um, that was that's been now about 10 years, and obviously very proud about what Taiku has been able to accomplish. Tequila, I have a tequila company called Life Tequila. Um, it's about enjoying the good life. The other thing that we're working on, my my business partner and I, Joe, we we want to bring gelato, you know, mainstream. Bless you. Yes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm an ice cream fanatic. I've yeah. been eating ice cream yeah. nightly since I was probably like six. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't how know, is this even possible? My, you're like a professional like, athlete, <laughs> you know, and you're, I mean, I don't know how you do it. Ice you cream's eat really three, good. Three times, Mexican three times a day. I try. That like, that that's that's a goal for me. Yeah. And you're like living living my dream. Well, we're like in Southern goal. California. You, you, you I know, it's it. true. And, and you do have, yeah, it's it, there. That's definitely. Mm -hmm. And then ice cream every day. Okay, this sounds like a diet of champions. So, yeah, so, so yeah. obviously spending time in Europe and, and yeah. traveling around, you know. Because um, you were professional soccer in. I, I played soccer in, in Denmark. Yeah. So obviously gelato is huge. And, and realize that gelato is so. a lot better for you than American ice cream hmm. in terms of calories and fat content hmm. and having this kind of nutrition health background. Yeah. It's like, wow. And I noticed that after I ate, a considerable amount of gelato, mm -hmm. I still felt much better than I do when I eat um, even a small amount of ice cream. I thought, man, this, this it's, it's not really about gelato, it's about a superior ice cream, a superior dessert, mm. and kind of bringing that to people. And, and now I've been making it, you know, myself for the past eight, yeah. nine months and kind yeah. of sharing it with friends and family and, and people really love it. Dude, I'm so excited. Gelasio? Gelasio. Gelatio. The Gelato Gelatio. Palace. The Palacio Gelatio is... Palacio of is, Gelato. Is, that's right. The Palace Gelato of Gelato. Palace. I love it. Um, and so... You're you're basically like bored a lot then, obviously. Never bored. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Someone's like... They're like... Someone, I was talking to someone the other day like, Yeah, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> bored. What does that look what like? What is it even? Yeah. I don't even know what that means. I don't know how that, what's the common thread? Like, mm -hmm. how do you decide where, mm -hmm. which of these businesses to say, mm -hmm. I, I want this part of who I am, like yeah. part of my, my legacy? Yeah, I, it, it's a combination of things, obviously. I think there's the emotional aspect of it, which is, is it exciting to me? Mm. Am I passionate about it? Um, 
I've been fortunate to do a lot of different things. And one thing I realized is I won't do things with people who aren't passionate about it. You know, if it's, if it's just a good business strategy, if it just has a good P&L, if, mm -hmm. if it's just that there's a good opportunity in the market, let somebody else do it. Yeah. Um, I don't like doing things alone, right? I'm a, I'm a team sports player. I'm a soccer player. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a tennis player. Yeah. I'm not a golfer, Yeah. you know? So if, if I can do it with people that I love, right, then I'm excited to do it. Yeah. Um, so the team is hugely important mm. to me. Uh, no, no matter how good the opportunity is, and even if I had the skill set to do it on my own, I would not. And I'm a brand guy. I'm an emotional guy. I'm a, I'm a storyteller by nature. So I get excited when there's, a, when there's a product or a service or a company that can really make people feel a certain way. And the stronger that we can feel that need of making them feel a certain way, I'm super excited about it because I know that's what creates lasting value, mm -hmm. you know? I've never been a, hey, let's just go jump into a, to a price game, right? And there is great strong value propositions in, in pricing. But also, the more and more companies that, you, that you're a part of and the more and more things that you do, you realize that the customer feedback and the, the customer satisfaction is a major driver. So like in Motivate, for instance, the, the emails that we get about changing lives and, and, and making people feel great, and it, it sounds so cliche, but it, it really does make it worth it. And the only, the only way to really do that is to feel deep insecurities amongst consumers. So one of the things I look at is I go, okay, where, not just where the need is, mm. but what's the insecurity driving that need? Mm. And if you can figure out what the insecurity is that's driving that need, you can empower people. And if you empower people, right, now you create real loyalty, now you create real brand value. So even in dessert, the insecurity is that I shouldn't be doing it. I shouldn't be eating it, right? That's where the insecurity is driven from. So that's why I'm super, super excited about gelato. Because we, we, we want to eat dessert, we want to have fun. So if I can provide a better alternative for you, where you are less insecure about enjoying it, and at the same time, create a product that actually tastes better for you, well, then I know that I have a, a winning proposition. You mentioned someone that, you know, consumer mm -hmm. feedback, they'll email you or something and say, this has changed my life. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things? I mean, obviously, it's a motivator for you. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I, I what think, are some of those examples that come to mind that, that of ways that you've made the world a better place by what you've created? Yeah, I, in order to answer, I think we have to go back to what is the need, right? What is the insecurity in a, in a particular industry, in a particular product place? For instance, if you and I walked into a taco shop just off the street, my insecurity, right, especially as traveling around, would probably be cleanliness. So I'm walking in, and the, and, and the thing that could kill me in a second is, is it not clean, especially at a food cart or something like that. So for that person to really win me over, they need to show me that cleanliness is, is, is a top priority for mm -hmm. them, right? That's going to that's gonna soften my insecurity, and now I can have a great experience with them, right? For you, it may be, because you're a taco connoisseur, for you it may be You that, are just as much <laughs> as I am. <laughs> yeah, you've taken it to another level. <laughs> but for you it may be like, I need the wow factor. I'm not here to have just another normal taco. Mm. So right away you need to be, right, the, the messaging, the imagery, that everything has to be why they're special, mm. right? So I think for companies, they have to identify what that, that driving insecurity is in their, in their consumer base. In Motivate Supplements, we identified this very, very quickly, which was we're in an industry that is about making you feel completely insecure. Right? Mm. For men, it's like if you're in not... In the supplement industry, In the right? supplement industry. Yeah. If, you're, if you're not huge and muscular and veins are probably right, not, right. not a man. On the female side, if you're not a bikini competitor, right? Mm -hmm. Then your boyfriend, your husband is going to leave you. Then you're not what you know, real femininity is. Mm -hmm. And that was really sad. Right? And I came into the supplement industry a bit as an outsider. My partner had been into it, you know, 20 some years. But entered this industry and said, oh, this is, this is wrong. 
or making people feel really terrible about themselves to drive supplement sales. Now, obviously, Nutrition Zone never did that, but the, the industry is doing that. So with Motivate, we said, well, let's go feel that, that insecurity. Mm. Let's uh-huh. create empowerment. Yeah, well, yeah. what does that mean? It means no Photoshopped photos, right? Back in the day when every, everybody's Photoshopping yeah. photos. It meant, right, what Dove did with real women, sure, what yeah. Nike's done, right. right? So going along those roads, you cannot believe, cannot believe the feedback, right? And people in the industry were like, we would take pictures and they'd be like, you can't put these photos out. You can't, you can't display these types of people. That's not what sells products. And we said, well, no, I don't, I don't, right now I don't care what sells products. What we care about is making people not feel insecure about themselves. Mm. And that created the loyalty and that's why Motivate just skyrocketed mm. in terms of you know, early sales and, and, and follow-up sales and consumer retention. So how did, how did, what does that look like? How did you translate that into an experience with the brand? Mm-hmm. Obviously, like part of one of the touch points is the visual that mm-hmm. people would get, like mm-hmm. the photos and That's things. Right. But what else does that look like as far as the experience that you're creating that make people loyal to motivate? Yep. But when you're having a village raise a company or raise mm-hmm. a kid, you guys, all the parents better be on the same page of what we want this kid to turn out like, right? Who are we? Yeah. What are we, we all about? What's we, important to us? We, in all of our different businesses, we talk about our kid. We don't talk about our business. We say, hey, what are we doing with our kid this week? Right? What does our kid look like? How, is our kid growing up? <laughs> What's this next stage of life for our kid? Right? How can we help develop? That's right. Further, you, yeah. if, you, if you kind of just let a child do their own thing for the first 15 years of life, and then at 16 or 17, you wonder why your child's not kind, <laughs> right? Or not generous and not loving. To now go back and try to infuse the values that you want in your company, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. I, won't, I would never join companies or acquire companies that didn't teach the kid over the first, you know, at the very beginning, who they needed to be. So awesome. And so let's, let's drill down on that just mm-hmm. a little bit more even. Like from an executionable mm-hmm. perspective, mm-hmm. like to a, to a beginning entrepreneur, mm-hmm. What does that look like? Setting out those values. What mm-hmm. does that like? Literally, what does that? What are the steps to that you've used yep. in your companies to like set those values? Get everyone on board. Yep. What have you done? So literally, it's getting in, in motivates case right. It started with four main people. Okay. It's getting those four people in a room and saying, okay, it's not about what we're going to do tomorrow. It's not about zero to three months. It's what do we want our eighteen-year-old to stand for mm-hmm. when they grow up? Right. Literally, what do we want them to stand for? Yeah. Right. And then on a business perspective, how do we make sure that we're creating a child that a lot of people want to be friends with? Right. Not just a couple of people want to be friends with. Right. That a lot of people want to be friends with. <laughs> um, and then what are the turnoffs? So what could this child do during its life yeah. that would turn people off? And how do we stay true to that? Mm. So, for instance, in the in the supplement industry, I don't know how else to describe it, but all the models kind of have this like come hither look, right? It's like sexy and, right? Yeah. And it, I don't know, it's just, it's, one, it's the same thing all day long, but two, it's, we don't want our, our, our young daughters to turn into this. We don't want our young sons to, to perceive and treat women this way. So why would we ever use these types of images in raising our own kid? So we had these rules that models could never have a come hither look, ever. And models, so you like literally you have that written down. It's written down. Like, it's, it's, it's written down no. that, that if, and, and if, <laughs> and if a single post yeah. ever came through, and like, we, nope. right? And, well, the truth is we don't even really use models. We use real, real people. people. And so we have, a, we have a no smiling, no post rule, which is if you aren't smiling, if you aren't enjoying yourself, if you're not confident in the body you're in, you're not part of Motivate. Like that image doesn't get out, right? Well, there's two things. It's like infused into everything that you do. So mm-hmm. it informs decisions on which photo shoot we use or what people we're bringing on a board or whatever the case may be. Um, but then you also have the discipline to say no. Like, yeah, yeah. like to adhere to those values, right? It's, it's, it's very easy when you put it into parenting terms, right? My son or my daughter want to go do something. They're going to become more popular for it tonight if they go do it. We're gonna get more likes on that photo. Yeah, I know, I'll have them right. But look what this brand is doing. We're gonna get more likes. We're gonna get more engagement. It's like, yeah, I get it. You're gonna be more liked if you do this tonight. But that's not what we stand for. So it's not about likes or engagement tonight. It's about the individual we're trying to become, not the individual we're gonna be tonight. 
right? And in Perian's terms, it's it becomes quite easy to make decisions. It's very clear, and, it, yeah. and I mean, it's a great way to 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 envision. We're not there now to just check off crosses. Like, is she smiling? Check, right? Is she with friends? Check. It's what is the emotional story that's coming across, and if I can feel that, right? Ultimately, like in Motivate's case, we want the customer to feel like they just witnessed something so special, right? That they feel privileged that they got to see this moment of these friends engaging with each other. It's not. It's 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 about empowering. It's about reality. It's about this is real life. So if I look at it and my feeling is, well, she's attractive, or my feeling is, well, yeah, I guess if you take that, you're going to get leaner or stronger. We've we've missed the mark. Missed it. Yeah. So it's not about just checking off the boxes. It's about making sure that the emotion that we're trying to create is is always achieved, and that's how we decide everything, from the gym to motivate to everything. What are we trying to make somebody feel? So what is that? How do you actually enact that? Like, what have been some of the impacts when you've um, when you maybe had to say no? Like, obviously, some of these photo shoots, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, you work so hard to gain a dollar of business. <laughs> you know, so oh, yeah. hard. Years and thoughts and oh, yeah. sleepless nights. You work so hard to gain a dollar of business. Oh yeah. And the question is, is when do you, when are you willing to turn that business away? And that's really, to me, what what the true test of entrepreneurship, the true test of, are you going to live by your your values? At Nutrition Zone, the value proposition is sincerity. We sincerely want to help you. Mm. So you walk into a normal supplement store, and what happens? Hey, how are you doing? What are you trying to do? You trying to be bigger? You trying to be leaner? You trying to be slim down? Well, yeah. let me show you the products that can help you get there. Right? It's sales mode immediately. So how do you differentiate yourself? And what is it? If we go back to insecurity. As a consumer walking in, what's my insecurity? My insecurity is one. I'm in there because I'm insecure about something. Right? My weight, my size. So now you, you, I'm vulnerable. You can sell me stuff because I'm insecure. Mm. But I'm also insecure that I'm going to walk in there and you're going to sell me all this stuff I don't need, right? So I have this double insecurity level. So at Nutrition Zone, you have to, we have to identify our, identify our value proposition. And Nutrition Zone, our value proposition is sincerity. So you walk in, you're insecure. We say, oh, let's not talk about products. Let's spend now 10 or 15 minutes and let's talk about what you eat. Mm. Let's talk about how active you are, and let's go through that. And you may come in saying, "Hey, I want to put on some weight," and you are coming in to buy protein powder. And we may say, "Well, actually, you can get all the protein you need by eating chicken and fish and other lean meats." And people all of a sudden go, "Wait, wait, wait! I came in to buy something that you're not selling me, right?" <laughs> yeah. But it's sincere. Totally. Right. Exactly. And that is what is differentiating Nutrition Zone across the map. Yeah. This level of sincerity. How does that go further? Well, our guys write down. They write down who you were and what your goals were. And 20 or 30 days later, they call you and they check in with you and they text you. And they even know. ask, would you like us? Would you like me to check in with you? Amazing. Right? I'm not going to hold you accountable if you don't want to, but if you do, I will. And then they do. And then this is the word that's gotten out for Nutrition Zone. Wow. It's really hard for a brand new franchisee who just put their life savings on the line to buy a store. They just spent $125,000. It's all the money they ever made. And we're begging them that when those first customers come in to n- maybe not take their money, to spend 15 minutes with them and let them walk out the door. That's really, really, really hard. Really hard. Especially when you don't know when the next customer is going to walk in. Well, that's why we have to choose our franchisees very carefully. And that's where we have to really get them to buy in at the beginning. And, and we turned down nine out of 10 people into becoming Nutrition Zone franchisees. We could have 300 stores right now very easily if we followed the models of some of our competitors. But those models don't include sincerity. And that is our core value proposition, so we have to live by it. So that's Nutrition Zone's one example. So I, I, I firmly believe when the, when, when the tough, tough decisions happen, the tough decisions happen, the, the pocketbook, right? They, they hit the balance sheet and oh, yeah. the PNL harder than any oh, of them. Yeah. When those happen, that's where that's where it really matters, and that's where you create real brand value at the end. Because yeah. if your team doesn't believe in what you're preaching, and saying, and what you stand for, then you've lost. So why don't more leaders lead like you do, with 
va like values based with um, th l the consistent commitment with without the they're like with more of a short term focus instead of like building something that is making a difference in the world, lasting legacy, standing for something mm -hmm. instead of just making money. Look, I think at some at, at some point in some businesses, maybe it's impossible. If you've if you've raised a 12 year old that's never been kind or been kind to, to now expect them to be kind doesn't work. So if the business was set out, right, to just become profitable as fast as possible, and that's actually what has to happen or it all implodes, well then you can't go to a business leader and say, okay, now take a step back, make the tough decisions, lose some of that revenue. The business is over at that point. You, so, ha you have to start it from the from beginning. From the beginning, yeah. I mean, you and I have both started businesses and, mm -hmm. and gone through like the values-based mission, you know, let, who are we when we want to, who are we now, who do we want to be when we grow up sort of thing. Um, what, how, what is that, how has that looked like for you from a, from a execution perspective, time perspective? The companies that I'm a part of, of course, they all have mission statements and, <laughs> and all of that. But that's, it can be overwhelming, and that's, that's not where you have to start, especially as a young entrepreneur. That's, because to actually try to sit down and, and derive a mission statement and brand values and your DNA, and to just start from there, and you haven't had touch points with, your, with what you've started in your business, it's almost impossible. And the truth is you could probably tear those up within a, a few months. So what I would ask is, again, what is your consumer insecure about mm. what are you trying what mm. what need are you trying to fill we do this in friendships right as soon as we become friends with someone we ask them about them i want you to talk about you i want to get to know you and then based on what you say to me i know how to be a good friend to you mm. that's 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 the value proposition at the very beginning yeah my mission statement is how is trent going to be a good friend to scott right yeah. well i'm going to write that out but until I really understand what it is you need, right? I can't yeah. just say, Scott needs a good friend. I know how to be a good friend. Being a good friend is X, Y, and Z. Therefore, I'm gonna go do X, Y, and Z to Scott, and I'm automatically a good friend to Scott. Yeah. It's why you said, why do so many business leaders, why is there such a disconnect with their consumer base? They're being a good friend on their terms. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's really super insightful, because if you think about it, it's if you can if you can create something that fills a need you understand what that is that i think is really i mean in lieu of a forthcoming mission and value statement mm -hmm. and customer experience and everything mm -hmm. like delineated mm -hmm. and fleshed out like that can be your driving force because those really are your values and so i mean that you, you've had some tremendous results based on this this MO on this mentality of, of addressing the need, finding mm -hmm. the insecurity, mm -hmm. filling it, mm -hmm. empowering, mm -hmm. and creating, creating worth in mm -hmm. people's lives, mm -hmm. like value, adding value. If we think about our lives, right, of course we want to eat good tacos. That's true. Of course we want to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, of course we want to course. buy clothes that make us feel good. Sure. But at our deep, deep core, when we, when we, when we, go to our room and we're by ourselves and we look in the mirror, what is the most powerful thing in our lives? You could say love is one, but I would say what we're deeply insecure about is the most powerful thing in our life, right? Mm. You, we, all, we, all, we all do it and we all know the friends that overcompensate for what they're insecure about. Mm. So we're dealing with the most powerful influences in our lives. But I would even say that helping me feel more secure about myself, maybe even more powerful than love in that instance. Hmm. Because that is what's deep, deep inside of me that I'm trying to, trying to really help. And we all have it. We have it about our looks. We have it about our relationships. We have it about every single thing that we're doing, right? <laughs> and everyone has built brands that drive insecurity deeper and harder. You have to have this car because if not, you're not successful. You have to wear this watch. You have to, right? You have to eat at these restaurants. You have to stand in this line at this club. So we've driven and driven and driven as a market, insecurity, 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 insecurity. If business leaders would just take the different approach and say, 
I am going to figure out where these insecurities lie and I'm going to make people feel better. It's the massive differentiator, massive. It's going to take longer. It's going to be harder. It's going to get people hard to buy in. It's a movement. It's really hard and really tough. And fortunately, right, you got to have teams that buy into it. You got to have partners and investors and, and spouses that are patient, right? But the return on investment is not just there. And that's why you have to think about the 18 year old kid, not the seven year old or six year old kid. Um, but the return, in, the return in life satisfaction is phenomenal. What does that feel like for you? I mean, I have goosebumps right now. It feels, it, it, it feels amazing. Me too. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a joke in my office. When, when people send Google invites for meetings, right? The name of Trent's office is the Red Chandelier office where people come to cry. And that's the name of the office because when people come in and we talk about working together, being partners, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about how we're going to go make a lot of money. Now, of course, we're in business. Our goal is to make money, right? We are in business to compete and to win, right? That is, to me, that's, that's a foregone conclusion. We are here to provide for our families. We're here to provide for our employees. We're going to do that. But what we quickly talk about is insecurities. Everybody in the office, that's what we talk about. Where are insecurities? Where, where is there a need? Where is there a, a, a feeling, right? How did, how did that make me feel? How did that make me feel? It's, it's deeply, deeply rewarding. It's also probably why we're so busy because we have a lot of these conversations instead of just mm -hmm. looking at P&Ls. Yeah. But I do believe it's what, what creates lasting brand success and differentiation. And it's also, it creates the love portion, right? What do you want your legacy to be? I, I think legacy is a dangerous concept. People always ask me, or I have this part to say, I want my legacy to be this, I want my legacy to be this. Um, ultimately, I want my legacy to be that I am a good parent, that I have raised good kids. And companies to me, like we've said, we, our kids. So if we've, we've raised good kids, then they are productive, they've helped society, um, and ultimately they're gonna hopefully go raise other good kids. Mm. The, the managers that have, that have been with us and left, I know that if they've been here long enough and if they bought into it, they're out raising other good kids, <laughs> right? I mean, just imagine if, if more people had your mindset, more business leaders of, within their realms of influence, uh, the mindset of um, making the world a better place, raising good kids mm -hmm. in both senses, right? Like in their own, like their actual real kids mm -hmm. and then their kids, their business kids and mm -hmm. business ideas and mm -hmm. business responsibilities. Um, just imagine if people cared that much more about those touch points, mm -hmm. if they cared about adding value to people's lives, mm -hmm. helping people feel better about themselves, addressing mm -hmm. needs, insecurities, helping them feel loved, mm -hmm. like they belong. Everyone wants to feel like a VIP. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to feel special. Mm -hmm. Um, I just envision a world where, where happiness levels are raised up, mm -hmm. you know? So hopefully entrepreneurs, and I think they are, right, are thinking longer term and creating real value. And then our shift from using insecurities against people to empowering people and making people more confident within their insecurity creates the, the long-term value. Yeah. I also feel too like we're spending so much of our lives working. Mm -hmm. why, don't we, why don't we work in something that's adding immense value to mm -hmm. people's lives? Mm -hmm. In whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be a taco. It could be protein mm -hmm. you know, supplements. Mm -hmm. It could be tortillas. It could be a boat. It could be candles. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as we're adding value mm -hmm. to people's lives and, and, and where, where that, that desire to care comes through mm -hmm. in every touch point. Agreed. You know? Like you said, like emails or in-person interactions. Mm -hmm. we, need a, we need to constantly be talking about how does our customer feel? Yeah. How do they feel? Even when you clean their table, how did they feel? Did they feel like 
you wanted them to leave? That they've right. been there too long? Right, right, right. Did they, right? Right, right. Did they feel like totally. you're so happy that they're there? Yeah, did you enjoy your meal? That's right. You know, that's one of the things I love about Mexican culture and, and the taco experience is that, I mean, I, I lived in, you've spent a lot of time in Mexico. I lived in Mexico for three years. Mm -hmm. Whenever anyone invites you into their home mm -hmm. and they're always like, le gusto? Mm -hmm. Like, did you like it? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like they and really want to know. But it's, it's, it is this level of sincerity mm -hmm. and of a genuine concern mm -hmm. for how you receive something. Mm -hmm. Like they talk about the secret ingredient mm -hmm. in tacos or Mexican food being mm -hmm. love or yeah. in food in general. Of course, like, of course. you know, was it made with love? Mm -hmm. You can feel it. You can feel yeah. it. You can taste it. You know that it's real mm -hmm. because people, because of the care that they put into it mm -hmm. and how it's delivered to mm -hmm. you. What's one thing that you would suggest to a business leader, CEO, entrepreneur, at any stage of their business? Um, what's one thing that they could do to dial up, to level up the brand or customer experience? Like what's one thing that would, that's, that's like palatable, something that they could even do today or tomorrow to just like dial it up even one notch? What would you suggest that be? So in terms of turning consumer experience up, I can't give a general answer. What I'd say is, go listen to your customer. Mm. Go understand who he is or who she is. And you tell me, you come back to me and tell me what the best thing about being a good friend to that customer, what their need is. In a gym, is it remembering their name? If 80% of people said that remembering their name when they walked in, is being a good friend to them, okay, well then that's what you need to do, Yeah. right? If they said, well, hey, actually, you know, what I really care about is your, your bathrooms are a mess. Well, then being a good friend is providing a clean bathroom for them. <laughs> so probably not the answer you want. It's not, a, it's not a, hey, this is what's gonna go turn it up a level. The answer is go ask how to be a good friend. And when you find out how to be a good friend, do everything in your power, pivot, Figure out, and make sure it's enough friends. Don't get one data point, right? <laughs> get enough data points. Yeah. But just do the one thing that makes them feel like you're a better friend. And if you're a better friend to your customer, you're gonna win. I mean, it's really great. I, I mean, we've had a lot of discussions about mm -hmm. life and business mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. Not as, I mean, there needs to be, we need to have, have more. No well, question, and, 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 and then we will. And maybe that's the takeaway. The more you make business like life, the more successful it is, right? The more you make it about just Absolutely. being the person you want to be and being friends with the people you want to be yeah. and treating people like friends. Then. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. I'm so excited to share this. Well, I'm excited to eat this taco, but I'm more <laughs> excited for people to hear your perspective, hear your advice, because it's, um, it's a transformative, you know, like that level of thinking and mentality of, of making a difference, addressing the individual mm -hmm. is so awesome. I think and, it is. And it's seen, you've seen amazing results and that's really helped you thrive mm -hmm. in your businesses, mm -hmm. but also personally, mm -hmm. like you can feel that of course. In, in what you've shared. Special thanks to our host, Soul Mexican Cocina, for creating the ideal place for us to talk about brand and customer experience. I'm always a sucker for some Mexico City-inspired grilled cheese on a taco, and the salsa pairings were on point. Join our epic taco journey on our website. You're not going to want to miss out on the national taco tour we're planning when we launch the book, The Search for the Perfect Taco. So follow us on social media, subscribe to our channel, and tune in to another episode of Taco Incidents, where we'll continue to explore the secrets to level up your brand experience and your taco game. Okay, just throwing this in here. El Pilon. I feel like the queso taco is a must. Must. The but if, if, if the Vampiro has, has won all the awards, I mean, how do you, how do you, how not, do you not get how do you that not either? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm fine with those two. But do you, do you want to get, like, different tacos than we share? 
is what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm fine with that. We could do that, too. Yeah. Are you a fish taco guy? I am or a fish you taco meat? guy. I, I, I am more meat than fish. That's but, me but, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, don't do it for me. Yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, I... <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, we've, like, seriously, that just, that's like one of those things when someone t- starts talking to you about, like, I dream of that, those tacos in Mexico City mm-hmm. with the cheese on the grill and the, and they yeah. scraped off. And so when someone starts talking about it, it's like one of those things, like, it gets you it off track. It brings you there. For, yeah. And not off track, on track. Yeah. But then you're like, wait, I'm there, and now I gotta come back to America. I know. I'll have to come. Reality. I'll have to go to Mexico City. We gotta with you. do it. It's like a sh- Guadalajara, I spent a lot of time. Yeah, there. yeah. And the food there is also incredible. <laughs>